Hi, everybody. Welcome. It's a great honor on behalf of the school administration, the lay leadership, the professional leadership, for me to welcome you this evening. And as I was thinking about tonight, the first thought that occurred to me time and again is really what, what a privilege, what a bracha, that we can look out and we can come together. And we can come together, obviously, tonight for a very important event. But the idea of coming together is something that is uh, rather significant. And um, you'll hear a little bit tonight of some of the lessons that your children, grandchildren, have learned during their Holocaust studies with Rabbi Burstein. And one of them is the, really the power of resiliency. And that is one of the enduring lessons of our people. And we've relied on that resiliency more times than we uh, wish to remember. But certainly it's something that our children, our students, your children, have relied upon greatly over these past two plus years. And really, Sheikh uh, what a bracha that we can be together tonight. Um, I asked the kids today, we put on a presentation at about one o'clock. So I asked the kids in the audience, who's ever been to one of these performances here at Yavna before? And there were a smattering of hands that were raised throughout the room. And the reason I asked the question is the last two years we've been virtual. And in our school, there's sort of like a legacy. It's a rite of passage. As our students grow to become our leading grade, as they become our eighth graders, they sort of look forward to this experience as really one of the pinnacle moments of their entire experience here at Yavna. And really, it is very much that for all of us, for the kids and for us as their educators. Um, you know, this year's program in many ways is different. And as I like to say, different by definition is neither good or bad. It is what it is. It's different. And for me, different represents opportunity. And many of you already commented to me that when you walk through the gallery in the back, you looked at the Yavna Connects program, the Yavna Artifacts. You looked at the art gallery, the new virtual reality program. And you see the, the sheer talent, the creativity, the brilliance that this grade combines together. Of course, there are thespians, there are actors, there are playwrights, there are stagehands. And then you think about the artists and the musicians and the children that are learning virtual reality and learning how to use a 3D pen. And all of that gives each one of our students an anchor, something that they can feel proud about, something that they contributed to tonight's program. So if you haven't yet viewed the gallery in the back, I certainly encourage you to do so. Um, towards the end of tonight, there'll be a series of thank yous. I feel like it's important to highlight just a couple of people from the, from the outset tonight. So I mentioned both the Yavne Connects and the new virtual reality program. So to, to Hani, to Claire, to Tova, you, uh, not only did you create so much of this, you, you embraced it with, with a full heart. And through your leadership, our students really were able to learn all of these skills that I don't think your average eighth grader is able to learn. In particular tonight, we have the privilege of hosting um, two dear friends uh, and also friends of the broader Bergen County community uh, Mr. Steve Fox and Mr. Bruce Prince, they are the, I believe, the co-chairs, if I have it correct, of the uh, Bergen County, or the Northern New Jersey Holocaust Memorial that is housed right now in the Teaneck Library. And our children are actually creating the content. The content that we are making here in Yavna is, please God, going to be shared there. And I think that's rather significant. Um, it's a real honor that uh, Mr. Warren Black is here with us tonight. He was our virtual reality uh, genius, mentor, educator, and teacher, and also uh, inspiration. And you really uh, believe that this could happen. So to the three of you, I thank you. And I thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, Mrs. Rubin, Robbie Burstein, you'll be thanked sufficiently at the end. Uh, I, I feel I want to add my own word. No one knew what it would look like this year. Baruch Hashem, it's amazing. The kids are amazing. The performance today was amazing. And um, you both know I was less available this year than I, than I had intended. And you really um, carried, you really carried the, the program forward. Um, many of you, if this, if this is not your first experience with us, so the name Dominique Sieri probably rings a bell to you. Dominique has been part of the Yavna family for 
well over two decades, probably close to three decades, um, an innovator, uh, a creator, someone who poured her heart and soul into this creation. She had many schools and programs that she worked with. This particular program really struck a chord with her. Uh, we invited her to join us tonight, and uh, I'd hoped that she could join us in the last second she was not available. Um, so among my many thanks that I have to Dominique is the thanks of continuing the legacy because Michaela Simon, our current director, is one of the prize students of Dominique, and when Dominique shared with us that she would be stepping away, she recommended Michaela to us, and Michaela, she could not have been more spot on. It's a real honor to get to know you, and we thank you for what you did for us tonight. Um, I'm just gonna conclude with perhaps one minute about Hi, students, I'm going to talk to you about this one. So I know you're. In, I don't know if you can hear me back there because you're behind the scene. Um, you know, we we live, as we all know, in in a uh, in a wonderful world and in a challenging world. And um, we wish there would be a world without anti-Semitism, uh, without hate. And uh, it feels to me that nary a week goes by that we don't read of a story of um, you know a, a Jew being uh, beaten up walking the streets of Brooklyn or being uh, perhaps thrown off an airplane, and the stories are very upsetting, and we can never become dull to those stories. And when I speak with the kids, I also, I expand it. This is our story, it's our Jewish story, it's our story of the greatest tragedy in the last 2,000 years. I also talk that it's, um, it's a terrible story about hate in our country, and we, um, we think about the terrible tragedy a couple days in Buffalo, and and in a church in California. And I, I want the other students to realize that they need to stand up against hate in any way, shape, or form. And I think what we do here, it's learning about the past to impact the future. And it's learning about the past, those who need to learn about their own history, and it's also hopefully giving our kids a platform of how to become resilient and how to build that spiritual bond and how to become people that can impact the world and stand up for what's good and just and right. And um, that is one of our deep goals here. Um, how do we learn from the lessons of the past? How do we grow from those lessons? And how do we move forward with determination to carry on the legacy of those who passed and to continue to stand up for what's right and just in the world? So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Rabbi Burstein so we can begin with the Yiskra program and with the candle lighting ceremony. Thank you very much. Right before we begin, I just want to add uh, a few words of thanks to Rabbi Knapp himself and to Mrs. Rubin, who have been so staunchly behind this program, and to welcome Michaela uh, to our team. I also just want to, even though they will be thanked later. I just want to personally thank uh, Deborah Perlman and Elisa Strauss, as well as Michelle Froelich and Renana Silverman for making this production so much more easy in, in burden, shouldering and burdening themselves with much of what has become possible in front of you this evening. For many, many years, long before I was part of this program, uh, Rabbi Kualwasser, uh, the principal for nearly 35 years here, he had set up a way of memorializing the six million Kedoshim by lighting six candles, which of course is done in many of your synagogues and JCCs, etc., around Yom HaShoah. And on the night of the Holocaust production, we would honor people who themselves were survivors, or at this point, because so many are no longer with us, we're going to call up uh, as well. We have, we're blessed with two gentlemen who stepped out of that period of time and by the grace of God are still with us today. They're gonna to be accompanied, one by his great-granddaughter and one by his granddaughter, and then we're gonna have children called up who are going to light in memory of a grandparent, uh, together, possibly together with their own parent. So 
After we do so, I'll ask you all just to stand for the Kel Malé, the special memorial prayer for the six million Kadoshim. We're going to begin by honoring, just give me a moment, Mr. Gregory Abraizov, who is accompanied by Sivan Sher, who will light the first candle. Mr. Andrew Sirkani, accompanied by Aidan Riskin. Mr. Abrezov is from the former Soviet Union and had a distinguished uh, career in the Soviet Army uh, and helped to liberate uh, Germany from the uh, Cursa German Nazis. Mr. Sarkani is from Hungary and his story was told in front of one of our classes a few years ago. We were, invited him this year as well. He has been so busy. He told me he's spoken every day for the last six weeks. So we weren't privileged this year to hear his story, but we hope to again. Um, our student, Max Eckstein, is going to light on behalf and memory of his grandfather, Moshe Eckstein. Together with his father. This candle will be lit by, lit by Hilly Froelich together with her mother in memory of their family member, Mary Goodman. Uh, Liana Khan, who is going to light on behalf of her beloved Great uncle, Jerry Leader. And three cousins, Elisheva Sosemsky, Atara Goldwasser, and Daniel Ekman are all lighting in memory of their great-grandmother, Cecilia Grunspecht. Okay, I'll ask you uh, to please rise. Il moli rachamim shalchein b'meromim hametzei menuchonechono. Tachas kanfei ashechino Bemahalos kedoshim tehorim Kizoar horaki amazirim Es nishmos achenu b'nei Yisroel 
HaKedoshim Utorim Shenaflo Bidei HaRotzechim Venishpach Domom Biyoshvitz Bechel Moso Bibor Bebabiyar Bemai Dantnek Belshet Utreblinko Ubeshar Mekomos Umachanos Hashmat Beiropo Shenergo Veshenisrefo Veshenishchato Veshenik Berochayim Bechol misos mishunos v'achzorios al kiddush Hashem b'avur shekulon misyach adim im zichrom u'mispalilim v'yadaz koraz nishmoseyem b'gan eden. Tehei menuchosom Lochein Baalo rachamim Yasti rein beseser kenofov Leolamim V'yitzror b'tzoros hachayim es nishmosei hem Adonai unachalosom V'yonuch b'shalom al nishkevoseyem V'nomar omen You may be seated. Good evening. This year's Yavne Academy graduating class is proud to present the story of Ellie Wiesel as portrayed in his award-winning book, Night. Ellie grew up in pre-war Europe in a town called Seget. Seget was, for a time, part of Romania in a region called Transylvania. Around 10,500 Jews lived in Seget during this time. Many were Hasidim, many others simply Orthodox. Still, others were religious Zionists. Seget had a successful lumber industry and it became a center of the forestry business. The town also sold a great deal of salt that was gotten from local salt mines. Seget had a yeshiva. A trades program in the yeshiva was established for boys who can earn a living outside the Beit Midrash. In 1940, Hungary was given control of Transylvania from Romania. Both countries were allied with Nazi Germany. Life for the Jews of Hungary was mostly peaceful for the first few years of the war. Many Hungarian-born Jews could not have imagined or even believed that the evil that was befalling over most of European Jewry would one day happen to them as well. In 1941, Hungary deported 20,000 Jews. These Jews had fled to Hungary from Poland and elsewhere to escape Nazi Germany. They were forcibly moved to Kamenets Podolsk in Ukraine. Among these Jews was one named Moshe the Beetle, Ellie's teacher in Kabbalah. To please Nazi Germany, Hungary enacted many anti-Semitic laws. 40,000 young men, Hungarian Jews, were forced into cruel labor brigades. Many died as a, as a result. Yet, Jewish life continued, leading most Jews to believe it would never get worse. But it did, much worse. By late 1943, Admiral Horthy, Hungary's leader, and other leaders around him understood with increasing clarity that Germany would lose the war. Horthy began exploring a way to make peace with the Allies, switching sides in the terrible conflict. When Hitler, Yamach Shemo, found this out, he was furious. He was determined to murder all of Hungary's nearly 800,000 Jews. Hungarian Jewry was the last ex extremely large Jewish community still alive in Europe. The Fuhrer made plans to invade Hungary, remove Horthy from power, and deport the Jews. In March 1944, German troops and tanks invaded Hungary, and Horthy was ordered to deport the Jews. After six weeks, all Hungarian Jews living outside the capital of Budapest were enforced into ghettos. The Zaget Ghetto was made on April 18th through the 20th, 1944. 
and it had two parts. Ellie, his parents and sisters, lived in what was called the small ghetto, in the slum, dirty part of town. Jews in the Syriac ghetto had to turn in their valuables under threat of death. They had to wear a yellow star. There was also a curfew in the evening. The ghetto was guarded by local police officers, and they would often beat Jews to make them confess where they hid their valuables. Deportations to Auschwitz were organized. There was little time for the Germans to lose. Hitler wanted to murder every one of these still living Jews. On May 15, 1944, Shavuos time, the first Hungarian Jews were sent on cattle cars to Auschwitz. The area from which deportations began included Seget. Over 12,000 Jews were deported from Hungary each day. Among these Jews were Elie Wiesel and his family. Their arrival in Auschwitz was dramatic, shocking, and terrifying. The story of how Elie and his father shed one fate and how his mother and sisters a different fate is the topic of our dramatic presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, the Yavna Academy Class of 2022 proudly presents Night. In 1941, I wanted nothing more than to study Kabbalah. When I asked my father to find me a teacher, he replied, Jewish tradition strongly rejects the ideal of people younger than 40 learning Kabbalah. He told me, there are no Kabbalists in Seget. And I believed him until I encountered Moshe the Beatle. Why do you cry when you pray? I don't know. Why do you pray? I don't know. I don't know. Moisha asked me questions that no one else bothered to. He spoke like he himself knew secrets others couldn't even imagine. It wasn't long before I asked him to be my teacher. There are a thousand and one gates to enter the orchard of mystical truth. Every human being has his own gate. He must not enter the orchard through a gate other than his own. Together, Eliezer, we will explore all the mysteries you seek. Haven't you heard? All the foreign Jews expelled, taken by Hungarian police just this morning. No, not here. Cattle cars crammed with Jews. I went to the platform to see for myself. I heard they're off to Galicia to help with the war efforts. One can only hope that's all that happens here. Moisha was gone for some time after that. Almost long enough for us to forget that he'd ever been there. And then one day he was back. Back, but not himself. Moshe. Ellie, they took us to a horrible place. They made us dig all day. We were animals. They chew, they chew anyone who looked at them. They threw infants in the air and used them as target practice. Everyone here thinks that I've gone mad, but I tell you, I was miraculously saved. I came back to tell the people of Zaget to leave. Cow while they can, but no one's listening to me. Suddenly, the magical stories he had told me felt like just that, stories, nothing more. But I was young and quickly forgot my disappointment. Life was good in Seget. There have been daily bombings in Germany and Stalingrad. Preparations are being made for the second front. Hamotzi lechem in Aretz. Amen. Don't worry, little one. They are sending us away to protect us, with what the front getting closer and closer every day. Maybe that. Or maybe to see our valuables and jewelry. Shah, don't say such things. They're children. Easier for them to dig for gold with the owners on vacation. Vacation? That's what they're calling it? Why would you say what that? You of course they deserve to know. What do you mean? The point, no. the point, get the point through. Ah! Ima, why is everyone so quiet? They are mourning. This may be our last night in Seget. But why? I don't know, Tsipora. I don't know. Bad things happen sometimes, even when we don't deserve them. But there is hope, my Tsipora. Never lose hope.
hear from our two eldest sons. Poor Miss Shaxter is seeing visions from grief. Father, it's because of thirst. We're out of water. Not now, Tsipora. May I go fetch some water? A woman here is sick with thirst. Quickly, now. He told us our final destination. There's a labor camp here. Conditions are supposed to be good. Will we stay together? Did they tell you? The old and the sick will find work in the fields, and the young will work in factories here. Families will not be separated. Jews, look! The fire! Everyone hurry outside immediately. Leave everything behind. Hey kid, how old are you? I'm 15. No, you're 18. But I'm not, I'm 15. You're a fool, listen to what I say. How old are you? 50. No, you're 40, 18 and 40. Age? Uh, I'm 18. In good health? Yes. Your profession? Farmer. We march closer to the pit. Twenty more steps. Fifteen. I bit my lips so my father wouldn't hear my teeth chattering. Ten more steps. We had marched as though we were a funeral possession. Our own. Four more steps. Soon, my fate would be sealed. I could see the pit, engulfed in flame. I said a silent goodbye. Here I was, face to face with the angel of death. O sash shalom bimramav, hu ya sash shalom aleinu, val ko yisrael bimramain. Never shall I forget that night. The first night in the camps that turned my life into one long night, seven times sealed. Never shall I forget that smoke. The shower smells strange. We run from place to place like mice. Why, Father? How long has it been since we were last given bread? Stupid, sir. Here are now spits. You work or go straight to the chimney. The choice is yours. Pardon me. Can we tell Mark a fine of facilities? How can he do that to you? It doesn't hurt. I 
will not lie to you. You will suffer here in Auschwitz, but don't lose faith. You will see a day of, we will see a day of liberation. Some advice. Help each other. We are all brothers. You are now in block 17, and I'm your block Altesta. Any complaints, see me. They must be exhausted. It's been a long day. Time to sleep. Those were the first human words I'd heard all day. I cannot eat this. It looks... I'll have it. All we ever hear are these bells, day in, day out. When I think of elsewhere, it's a place without bells. Roll up your left sleeves and pop through one at a time. A7713, that became my only name. allow this to happen. I feel myself losing faith. I believe God is just testing us. We mustn't lose hope and we have no right to despair. How can you claim to know the ways of God? None of us can. He has given up on us and left us here to die. Mashiach will come save us all. A better future is coming for the Jewish people after this man-made hell. Mashiach will save us all. A better future is coming for the Jewish people after this man-made hell. Hello, new faces. I am Juliet. This is Hans and Franek. You're lucky you fell into a good commando. Not dangerous or too difficult. Just watch Free Deck, the capo. He sometimes falls into fits of madness. The power gets to his head. Just stay out of his way. Don't kid yourself to do the work too quickly. There's no hurry. Just make sure to look busy. Hi, it's nice to meet you. This is my son, Eliezer. Hi, Eliezer. Where do you come from? Seget, Transylvania. And you? We're from Czechoslovakia. If I survive this, I will never return to Europe. I will board the first ship to Haifa. If we survive, we'll come with you. <laughs> yeah. Hello, what's your name? Bite your lips, little brother. Don't cry. Keep your anger, your hate, for another day, later. The day will come, but not now. Some ten years later, I was in Paris, on a train, and I saw a beautiful woman. I realized that I had recognized her. Miss! 
you recognize me? I don't know you, sir. 1944. You were in Poland, in Buna, weren't you? You worked in a depot, a warehouse for electrical parts. Wait, I remember. Edek, the young Jewish boy. Your kind words. Yes. May I ask you a question? I always thought you had to be Jewish to be so kind to me. But you looked Aryan. Maybe... But I am Jewish! I had false papers. When I was deported, I had looted the camps. No one knew I spoke German. It was dangerous for me to speak to you, but I knew you would not betray me. Franek the foreman took a liking to me after he dextruck me. He was kind to me, so I was kind back. And then one day... What a nice gold crown you got in your mouth there, boy. I think I'll take it. I told him I'd have to ask my father before making up my mind. Father, Franek wants my gold crown. Don't let him take it from you. He's a good man, a fellow Jew. I'll not give you my crown. Oh, but you will. I know your weakness. Oh. Enough, enough. I'll give it to you. Just leave my father alone. I knew you'd make the right choice. That night, a dentist from Warsaw pulled down my crown using only a rusted spoon. Ah! Franek was pleasant again until two weeks later when he was transferred to a different camp. And I never saw him again. I lost my gold crown for nothing. How can we fast? We may as well let ourselves starve. Besides, we are starving already. It is Yom Kippur every day here in Buna. Don't fast, Eliezer. I forbid you. Yes, Father. What do you think this is about? They've raised the roll call. I bet it's because of this election. I worry that my father will not be strong enough to pass. He will. I can feel it. You can never be too sure. In a few moments, selection will take place. To increase your chances, move your limbs, give yourself some color. Don't walk, run, unless, unless you have a death wish. Run as fast as you can. Ready? You're too weak, too skinny. You're only good for the ovens. Did they write me down? No, they couldn't have. You were running too fast. It all went well, do not worry. You think I'm lying? I'm telling you that nothing will happen. So, did you pass? Yes, yes. And you, Father? Me as well. Attention. I have a list of numbers. If you see yours, you'll remain behind when the block leaves for your work commandos. Please, you said he would save us. I want to work. I'm strong enough. Me too, me too. They told me to stay in the camp. What are we going to do? Don't worry. It's not certain. They may do another selection. No, Father. You can't stay here. What's here. Take the siphon spoon. Don't sell it. Father, don't talk like that. Just take it. I'm asking you. Please. I All day worried. How could I feel like an orphan when I wasn't one yet? Could there still be such thing as miracles? 
That day, I gave the knife and spoon back to my father. If we don't operate soon, the swelling will only worsen and the foot may have to be amputated. I'll be back soon to begin the procedure. No time to waste. Don't let the doctor fool you. The infirmary is a dark place. Selections here are even more common than in the box. Before I'm gone, hear my advice. Get out of here as quickly as you can. <coughs> Ready, my boy? Will it hurt? Well, I know you'll be brave. Will I be able to use my leg again? Of course. It was a simple operation. With a couple of weeks of rest, you'll be your same old self again. Thank you, doctor. Will my father be able to come see me? I'm not sure. They are beginning the evacuation of the camps tomorrow night to March. The sick will stay behind in the infirmary. We hope you'll be true with kindness. They'll evacuate, and then they'll throw us into the ovens. Hitler said he'll annihilate us before the clock strikes 12. What do you think, Daddy? Some sort of prophet? I have more faith in Hitler than anyone else. He alone has kept his promises, all his promises to the Jewish people. Enough with all this. Father, have you heard? They're evacuating the camp. I think we should want to march with everyone else. Are you sure you can manage? I'll try. Let's go then. I hope we don't regret this. I learned the fate of those who stayed in the infirmary. Two days later, they were liberated by the Russians. Don't sleep in the snow. Many never wake again. Please, we'll watch over each other. Sleep one at a time. All right, you first. Are you certain, Father? I just slept for a moment. Yes, Ellie, sleep. Father, wake up. I will always remember that smile. It helped me continue on. My foot feels like it's going to fall off. We're almost to Glybitz. <laughs> ah! Father, did you hear that? You're crushing me. Have mercy, mercy. Juliak, is that you? Ellie? Yes. Juliak, are you all right? Can you hear me? All right, Eliezer, all right. Not too much air. Tired. My feet are swollen. It's good to rest. But my violin. What about your violin? I'm afraid they'll crush my violin. Father, are you there? Eliezer, I'm trying to sleep. A violin in the dark, with the dead piled up on top of the living. Who was this mad man playing at the edge of his own grave? It must have been Juliet. He played Beethoven. I had never heard such a beautiful sound. It was as if Juliac's songs had become his soul. Never shall I forget Juliac. How could I forget a concert given before the dead and dying? When I awoke at daybreak, I saw Juliac facing me, hunched over his trampled violin. Another friend, gone. The next few days were a blur. We were put back on cattle cars. We had no food. We lived off snow. Night fell into day. We were frozen bodies, eyes closed, 
waiting for the next stop to unload our dead. Ever so often, a cry, someone else dead, and then... Four ranks of five, group to 100, five steps forward. Don't worry, they'll take us through the showers and then they'll give us bed. See, Father, it's just another moment. Then I'll be able to rest. I can't anymore. It's over. I shall die right here. Have pity on me. I'll wait here. You'll come and get me. Father, get up now. You'll kill yourself. Don't yell, my son. Have pity on your old father. Please, let me rest here a little. I beg of you. No, Father, you cannot stay here. They wanted to stay, too. Look what happened to them. I see, my son. They, too, are exhausted. Please, let them sleep, too. They are dead. They will never wake up again. Never. Do you understand? Son. The next morning, I couldn't find him. I searched and found him sitting in the snow. He had not asked where I'd been, just for something warm. I brought him coffee. Later that day, the strong were sent to clean the blocks while the weak stayed inside. When I returned, my father said he had not been fed. I gave him my soup. He soon developed dysentery and was not himself. Then, little moments of clarity, Eliezer. I must tell you where I put our valuables, in the cellar, under the earth. Water, Eliezer, please give me water. Water, Eliezer, please give me water. Silence. Water, Eliezer, please give me water, my dear boy. I said, be quiet. Eliezer. January 28, 1945. I awoke to a new man in his bed. No candle was lit in his memory. The last words he said had been my name. He had called out to me, but I'd ignored him. I could not find any tears in my feeble body. Maybe if I'd searched down deeper, I would have found a thought like this, free at last. I was sent to a refugee camp. I remained in Buchenwald until April 11th. I will not describe my life during that period of time. It no longer mattered. After my father's death, I lost all feeling. I only had a desire to eat. I dreamt of soup. The front was coming closer. On April 5th, the will of history turned, the beginning of our camp's liquidation. I was sent to a refugee camp. All I did was eat. A few days later, I got some sort of food poisoning and was sent to the infirmary. One night, I looked in the mirror above the wash basin. For the first time, I'd seen my reflection since the ghetto. From the depths of the mirror, a corpse was staring back at me. The look in his eyes had never left me. I stayed in the hospital for two weeks. Then I was taken to a French orphanage. I searched for my sister's names in a growing list of survivors. Unable to find them, my heart broke into pieces. How could I go on? Later, I found from the orphanage director that Hilda was alive. I scoured the papers looking for her, but she was nowhere, a ghost. I worried, what if I'd been lied to? But then, she found me. When we arrived at the camp, I was chosen for labor. After the war, I moved to France. I thought Ali to be dead, but then I saw him in the paper. A reporter from the orphanage had taken a picture of the children, and there was Ali, alive. Then we heard from B. We reunited at Antwerp, Belgium. I, too, was back before forced labor. I moved to Belgium and started a new life. We were finally all together again. We moved to North America and tried to live normal lives. I carry Tsipora with me everywhere I go. I think of her and our parents, and I weep. Shh. Ema, why is everybody so quiet? They are mourning. This may be our last night in Saget. But 
Why? I don't know, Tipora. I don't know. Bad things happen sometimes, even when we don't deserve them. But there is hope, my Tipora. Never lose hope. We must never lose hope. was over. American and British troops liberated concentration camps, slowly and gradually returning surviving Jews to a more normal life. Among the thousands of concentration camps was one named Buchenwald. It was there that Elie Wiesel was imprisoned, together with tens of thousands of others. Rabbi Herschel Schlachter, grandfather of her own rabbi and Dr. Leah Knapp, entered the camp and called out to the Jews, Yidin do be free. Jews, you are free. He helped nurse many weary and broken Jews back to life and strengthen their faith in Hashem. Most of these Jews, however, had no home to return to. Non-Jews who survived the war and concentration camps quickly got to the business of healing and returning home. Relatives and townsmen in countries throughout Europe were waiting for them. Most Jews, however, had lost nearly their entire families. Due to the lingering presence of anti-Semitism, most of these Jews were in danger of returning home. Where to go from here? Ali Wiesel was an orphan. Jewish groups in Europe were diligently searching for surviving children to bring them back to a safe and Jewish environment. Ali was placed in a French orphanage. He was eventually reunited with two of his sisters who had also survived. In France, Wiesel was very hesitant to talk about his experiences during the Holocaust, and he vowed an oath of silence about the experience for 10 years. While in France, Ali met Francois Mauriac, the 1952 Nobel Prize winner for literature. Maria convinced Wiesel to eventually tell the world about his life during the Holocaust. Years later, Ali wrote Night to show to the world the hardship he faced during the Holocaust. In the book Night, Wiesel tells his story through the eyes of a young boy named Eliezer. Night is considered one of the most outstanding masterpieces in all of Holocaust literature. 
He wrote the book because people believe that the Holocaust was not as bad as media made it out to be. Wiesel wanted to show the world through his book how terrible the ordeal was and how painful it was to go through, especially as a young boy. Wiesel succeeded in telling his story so effectively that readers feel like they were placed into the concentration camps going through the same things Wiesel went through. In 1955, Wiesel moved to New York City. He eventually became a citizen of the United States in 1963. He was a professor at City College of New York from 1972 to 1976, and from 1976, he taught at Boston University, where he became Andrew W. Mellon, professor in the humanities. Wiesel wrote many more acclaimed books, and he won several literary prizes. Many historians believe that, through his writings and speeches, Elie Wiesel gave the Holocaust its present definition. In 1986, Wiesel won the Nobel Peace Prize. He was one of the key planners who orchestrated the building of the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington, D.C. Wiesel made return visits to Auschwitz, particularly one visit in 2006 when he went with Oprah Winfrey. This was broadcast on her, tele on her television show at the time. Elie Wiesel continued to attend shul regularly in Manhattan and lived an observant Jewish life. Despite the agonizing spiritual questions about Hashem and what the Holocaust reveals about human nature, he remained an observant Jew to the end of his life. The world lost this great articulator of Holocaust memory and wisdom in July of 2016. He was 87 years old. He left a wife, Marion, and a son, Lisha, who was married and has two children of his own. May we continue to learn the lessons of this terrible period of time and share it with those around us, so the memory of the six million Kadoshim serve as a blessing for all of Am Israel and mankind. From early on in our education, Yavna Academy students are taught the importance of our history. As younger students, we remember looking forward to being in the Holocaust production. We had heard about the script writing, the artwork, managing the stage, and presenting to our classmates, teachers, friends, and family. However, we truly did not understand this experience until we lived the process. Tonight's production honors Elie Wiesel and his family, as well as all who perished in the Shoah. Many of us are grandchildren and great-grandchildren of survivors. Our love and respect for you continues to grow as we understand your lives. As with any great accomplishment, the production you have just seen would not have been possible without the help and support of numerous people, to whom many thanks are due. On behalf of the Yavna Academy cl graduating class of 2022, we are honored to share our gratitude. First, we would like to express our appreciation to our principal, Rabbi Jonathan Knapp. Without your backing of the play, this beautiful tradition would have first faltered and perhaps been forgotten. To allow that to happen would have been a great misfortune to you, to our audience, to us, the graduating class of Yavin Academy, and to the memory of the six million Kadoshim who died in the Holocaust. As our principal, you have kept open this tradition for us and for the victims of the Holocaust as a whole. The play is not only a memorial and a commemoration, but also a senior project for us, one which brings us together, shows us talents we did not know we had, and allows us to finish our time at Yavna with impactful memories. We are the only organization which holds this tradition. It is something which we are proud of and we love. Rabbi Knapp, you have the heartfelt gratitude of this eighth grade and the many before us who have performed this play in remembrance of the Holocaust. Mrs. Rubin, we owe you multiple thanks. Not only have you facilitated the success of our grade's beautiful and successful production, not only have you carefully nurtured us through the years of middle school, you have a deep understanding of what makes a great education and a rare and unique ability to really understand young people. Add to this passion and devotion you bring to teaching about the Holocaust as a child of survivors, we have a perfect construct of, for a meaningful commitment to learn about the event for ourselves and be able to pass it down to our children and their children after them. How can we possibly thank you enough for being so, so important a part of our lives? You are one of the foundational people who has made our Yavna experience such a rich and fulfilling one. We pray with, that with Hashem's help, you will continue to enrich and inspire many more young Jewish people and for many more years to come. Thank you, your graduating class of 2022. 
There is a great deal which takes place behind the scenes. We would like to thank Mr. Joseph Savetsky and his team for turning our middle school gym into a theater. <laughs> Mr. S Mr. Savetsky, listen to all of our needs and transform the room we are sitting in. Mr. Savetsky, you allowed us to pay tribute with dignity. Thank you to Joel Kirshner, Wilson Medina, and Lenny Snow for all your hard work. Chairs, tables, supplies, you made sure we had it all. Our multimedia gallery is a dream come true. Our artwork, our artifacts, our Yavna Connects, and our virtual reality experiences are all meant to educate our Yavna community of the Shoah. Our gallery will remain open after this evening's presentations. Thank you to Ms. Khani Lechliger and her staff for bringing virtual reality to Yavne. Under Ms. Lechliger's tutelage, we crafted storyboards and transformed them to the VR experiences. We appreciate and acknowledge the Northern New Jersey Holocaust Memorial and Education Center, led by Mr. Steve Fox and Mr. Warren Black, the creator of the software we used. Mr. Black trained us in each element of story design and programming. Mr. Fox and Mr. Black, thank you for allowing us to be part of your dream. Mrs. Claire Hirschhorn introduced Yavna Connects to eighth graders two years ago. As great grandchildren and grandchildren, we are honored to share the stories of our families with you. Thank you, Mrs. Hirschhorn, for helping us with the interview questions, preparing our scripts, and pairing our text with appropriate artwork. We express our thanks to Mrs. Kazam. Your ability to take an idea and create a world is inspiring. Learning how to blend colors, teaching us how to impact with proportion and features is an inspiring artist's dream come true. Thank you for your patience and daily guidance. And we know allowing eighth graders free reign with paint and brushes may be quite the challenge. Thank you for sharing your talent with us. Your guidance and patience is seen in each piece of our scenery. Thank you to Ms. Michelle Furlich and Ms. Renana Silverman for finding just the right costumes for us. You painstakingly went through the many boxes and ensured our, that our appearance this evening matched the roles we were honored to present. The many props that we used during our performances were coordinated by Mrs. Eliza Strauss. Rabbi Burstein called and you're ready with the suitcases, wine chests, chairs, pans and bottles and even a kitchen table. You ensured that our play would have the authenticity required and you did it with a smile. Thank you to Mrs. Deborah Perlman and her crew for doing our makeup and hair. I don't know how you got us all to agree to be being made up, but you did it. Michaela, you took a group of untrained eighth graders and assured us each step of the way that we would be able to honor Mr. Ali Wiesel and his family with dignity and respect. It began with the script writing where you stretched our belief in ourselves and taught us to become writers. You read the lines, had us reread them, taught us how to critique one another with respect and patience. Then the harder part began. How would you be able to train our eighth grade to not only memorize the lines but to be able to emote? Our relationship with you and, the, and our characters grew steadily and solidly as you worked to ensure us that we understood the lives that we were portraying, as well as the zechus that we had been given to give a voice to those who can no longer speak for themselves. Tonight's performance is much more than sharing the stage together to commemorate the Shoah. Rather, it is passion, talent, work, and your devotion to teaching us of the Shoah that we have experienced. Michaela, you have given us, you are, you have given us so, so much of yourself that we will take with us. From all of us, thank you for being part of our world. Your teaching will stay with us for the years to come as we continue to give a voice who many, to many who cannot. We hope that we made you proud. Michaela, thank you for being an integral, an integral part of Yavna Academy's eighth grade experience. Michaela, please join us, your graduating class of 2022.
On behalf of the entire graduating class, we would like to thank Rabbi Burstein for spearheading this incredible production and for all the time, effort, and love that he invested to make this happen. Our eighth grade, cl our eighth grade class was privileged to learn about the Holocaust with someone as knowledgeable as Rabbi Burstein. He has been a teacher and scholar for Holocaust studies for over 20 years and weaves practical lessons and ashkafos into the history that he teaches us. Rabbi Burstein teaches in a way that makes everyone engaged. From the poster boards displaying heroes of the Holocaust to the endless books in his library, Rabbi Burstein makes the story come alive. We come to class every day excited and eager to learn because we know that something special is in store. Even beyond this play, the way that he cares for us each and every day has left such a positive impact on us. So it's my pleasure to now call up Rabbi Burstein to join the class of 2022 on stage. Thank you all. You were terrific, and there will not be a greater group of people. I must concur, really outstanding, all the way down to the thank yous that were poignant, heartfelt, and genuine. I believe one more thank you is in store this evening, and that's a thank you to the Yav Academy, graduating class 2022. <laughs> Extraordinary job, everybody. Mazel tov, great job, that's a wrap. Mariv is five minutes outside to the left where we dive in Mincha, we'll be davening Mariv. And um, I won't say yet what day of the Omer it is, but we'll say it when we count outside. Everyone should have a happy one. Mazel tov, mazel tov. <laughs>